Hi everyone, hope you're ready for part two of Cocos Creator for Beginners. Today, we're going to go over some of the terminology used with the Cocos environment, as well as give you a quick look at the Cocos Creator user interface. Cocos uses a lot of terms that are used in modern game development, but if this is your first time developing, then you'll need to know a few things. So let's look at uh, some of the basic terminology used in Cocos Creator. To start, we need to understand what a node is. In most game development today, a node means any object inside your game. This can be the map, the player, a weapon, or even the camera. All of these are nodes and can be added at any time during gameplay. If we wanted to add CC to our game, we'd have to make CC a node. Every node in Cocos Crater comes with its own name, a location in the game on the XY coordinate, its own size, its own opacity, and a few other things. All of these are parts of a node, even if it doesn't appear to the player or needs to move in space. Like a camera, it's still a node. If we wanted to add a few more pieces of information about CC, we'd have to add something called a component. A component can, for example, tell us the color of CC's hair, what CC's favorite music is, or tell us CC's shoe size. These will be used in our game to add more characteristics to our nodes. For example, in the game we'll be making, we'll need a component that plays a sound whenever the character touches a star. So it's important to know how to build these components as well as create some scripts for them. We'll explain scripts a bit when we start to build our first game. Because we can see CC in this game, we can say CC is a sprite. Every item that has some visual component can become a sprite, even the background and the floor. When we start to use Cocos Crater, every sprite, script, background music, sound effect, and other things you add to the Cocos Crater to make your game work will be known as an asset. When you build your game, you will need to add a lot of assets to make it a lot more fun. Now that you know some of the terminology, we can go into Cocos Creator and look a bit more into how all of this works inside the software. Let's open up Cocos Creator and see the main menu. If you don't have an account with Cocos, you'll need to build one before you can continue. Here you can see all the files you already built. Let's open the new one. Click on the New Project tab and select Hello World Project. Make sure when you give it a name, you choose a different drive than the one you install Cocos Creator. So if you install Cocos Creator on your C drive, you'll need to have your project on a drive other than the C drive. Now, continue and let Cocos do its magic and prepare your project. This may take a few seconds or minutes depending on the specs of your computer. Now that Cocos Creator is ready, let's look over a few of the areas you'll need to know to make your game. On the left, there is the node tree. The node tree is where you'll be adding all of your nodes to be part of the game. You can see that there's already a canvas and a main camera placed in the node tree. The canvas is the world of your game. Everything inside the canvas can do something inside that world. The camera is where you can see within the canvas. This camera starts off as the same size as the canvas, but you can change this at any time so gamers can't see what your game is doing outside the player's screen. Let's click on the main camera to bring up its properties on the right. On the right side, there's a properties window. This already has all the node properties we talked about earlier, like position, scale, opacity, and more. But it already has a component called camera. We don't have time in this course to explain what each part of the camera component does, but you can see what happens when you add a new component. We'll be adding our own components in the next lesson. Below the node tree is the asset window. This is where all your assets are located. You can add your assets by dragging them from another window into the assets window, or build new assets using the plus sign. You can see both the node tree and the asset window have a search function for us. We won't use it a lot because we don't have a lot of assets for our game, but the bigger the game, the more we'll need it. This window is the scene window, allowing you to see what is happening in your game. 
The purple rectangle in the canvas is your game. You can see this by highlighting the canvas in the node tree. To the right of the scene window is the node library. You can view many pre-built nodes built by us that you probably will be using for your future game. If you would like to move this out of the way, you can click on the three lines to pop out the window and close it, or you can also drag the window to another section. Let's move this to the right window. You can add it to another window by dragging it to the middle of the window, or add it to the other tabs of that window. Let's make it a tab. On the right, there's a tab called Services. We won't be using it in our project, so let's skip this. On the bottom, you can see there are three different tabs. The console is used to give you information about your game, such as successful builds, errors, and logs for testing purposes. We'll talk about this more in a future video. Next is the timeline. The timeline allows you to build animation with your nodes, including walking animation, spinning animation, and more. We'll cover this in detail in a future lecture. But understand, it's possible to do all your animation structuring work inside Coco's Creator. Finally, there's a preview window to preview how the game looks. Since we haven't put anything in there, we can't really preview anything. So in our next video, let's build our first game so you can preview it in this window. So subscribe to us so you can get more tutorials on Coco's Creator, listen to interviews from Coco Creator developers, and more. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.